everybody, my name is Lickin' Feathers again today, and I'm tying Dale's American basic permit fly, right? It's the, it's the original, I suppose you'd say. Um, it's caught more permit than anything else, and it's caught a lot of other fish as well uh, bones, triggers, you know, like anything that eats a crab will eat American. And while this fly might no be as fancy as some of the more modern ones, it's still well worth tying um, and it will definitely put fish in the boat. As always, we'll put a materials list in the description, along with a link to the Patreon page for anybody that wants to support the channel, get access to the members only content, the online fly tying classes, as well as the internet the giveaways. Alternatively, you can subscribe, hit the bell button so you get notified of the new videos. Like the video, share the video, watch all the way to the end. All of that helps the channel to grow. So I've got my hook my vice. This is a Gamma Katsu SL11 3H. And this is a size 6, but that's the, the big 6s, these SL11s, right? It's like a, if you were talking about like the standard mustard, this is more like a 4. And I'm going to tie on some lead dumbbell eyes. Obviously, you can adjust these, uh, weight it to suit. I'm using the plated ones, but you can also, a lot of folk use the plain lead up to yourself. Just got to lash these on, and then I'll come over the dumbbell under the shank. And I'll come over the shank and under the dumbbell. I'm going to put a fair wee bit of pressure on, lock that in. You can still kind of adjust them at this point. And to really lock the eye in, I've said this in other videos, I come down the shank again. I'm going to come back up. And then I'm basically going to repeat this. Right? I mean, you could do it after tying in the flash about or something, I suppose, as well. But that's really really tightens things up right because you, you've got that extra grip in the shank that you the threads anchored and then you come up so the first thing i'm going to tie in here is a wee bit of flash about i'm going to take three strands there's plenty four three four whatever i like to just wet them so that i can kind of keep a hold of them set it aside for the next fly Catch it in, fold it over, and go back. Now I'm not going to be too fussy about cutting these all different lengths, I just basically want about a shank length off the back. Right. I mean if you really want to you can come in and adjust. Just set this in my hackle plier for the next flight. And I'll get ready for my claws. I'm just using a kind of, it's a cheap cape, Chinese neck, it's kind of Cree, I suppose, or barred ginger. Anytime I'm in a shop and I see one of these cheap capes, it's all marked, you know, any kind of variegated grizzly or anything like that, I always buy them because they're excellent for crab claws. I'm going to take two hackles feet opposite sides, so I'm going to have four in total. I like to take them from opposite sides because the curves kind of accentuate. Just accentuate it rather than, but I mean the fish don't care, you don't really need to care either. I just kind of like the look of it. So I'm going to take my first two and what I do, I don't want to catch all of the feather fibre in, but I also don't want to strip it just to the length of the claw, which I see some people doing. I just don't like that, I don't like the look of it, and I find that it wants to encourage the claw to roll. So, I want a claw that is going to be, say, about a body length, something like that, roughly. So come in, and I'll strip it well behind that, right? 
so that I've got maybe, I mean that's maybe nearly a hook and a quarter of feather. And then I'll set them down and I'll get my other side and I'll make them roughly the same. It, it doesn't need to be exact how much you strip, it's the tie in that matters and you can always adjust it. So after the fact, right? So that's about the same, right? I've got say a hook and a half, a hook and a quarter. I don't like to tie them in uh, as four. You can sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I'm just going to come in. I'll lay that on my side. I'm just going to take a loose wrap over. I'm going to tighten. I'm going to tighten on the underside to try to stop it rolling although it's not the end of the world if it does just cheat them back in and then lock it in and then your second side is much easier you just hold it up pinch them together make sure they're the same I'll let it angle slightly towards me so that the thread will carry it into position I'm just not quite happy. The ones on your side are no, the tips are not aligned. So just go back. Right, if you're not happy, just go back. Clean that so I can move it a bit better. Right, that's better. Make sure they're, make sure they're right. And I'm no murdering these two with tension, I just want to get them in and see how they sit. Check them again against my side and then I can tighten up. Now, they've come in quite nice. I don't mind that they're slightly separating there, that's, that's not the end of the world. can force them if I need to but as I say it really doesn't matter come in cut me that waist I'll just tidy this up oops and then throw my scissors across the room for some reason now we bit of head cement I know some people say you shouldn't use head cement and permit flies um, but look there's loads of patterns about nowadays that are all glued and all that and pretty much all of the ones that you buy from a shop will be cemented so I'll just get that on wipe away the excess with my finger and now I'm going to tie in my sparkle yarn body obviously the original was Aunt Lydia's but that's not made anymore so I've already cut these I've got just say an inch and a half or a few sections and I just put three figure eights or three like kind of X wrap three each way and then lock it in and I just get in the body alternating the bands um, I rarely tie American body a single colour anymore um, Even if it's a very pale bottom, it'll be like a, a very light tan and a white or a cream or something that I would use just so there's a wee bit of variation in the colour. Just work my way back towards the eye. Three each way. and then you can put it back and cover that up and this is giving you you've got to have the olive body and that fluorescent stripped in the belly now obviously most mercantile crabs nowadays people tie the crab body on the inside or they tie the they fold the fibres over the hook so they're coming straight out the side that's fine but I'm just tying this sort of the original pattern um, 
well, up to you. I mean, if you want to tie it on the inside, by all means. Um, and it's funny, I mean, as I've seen, there's fancier crabs nowadays that definitely catch fish and definitely work. And I think there's some interesting stuff with like, the realistic legs and all that. But um, if you ever read any of the old articles, I mean, Dale Brown's dead now. He's been dead for years. Uh, but any of the articles that he was, you know, involved in or written about him or whatever, interviews with him about permit fishing, I feel that nearly everything that I read, they would say, well, the Americans know the most realistic crab, or it's not the most realistic looking crab, but it acts like a crab, you know? It drop the way it sinks in front of a fish, let a crab flee into the bottom. Now, I'm not a permit expert by any stretch, but um, I've used Americans and other crab flies for a lot of other species, and one thing I would say is the the way they sink often does have an impact on how effective they are, not only for permit but for other species as well. Um, I can get, I can sneak one more in there, I think. I'd rather be tight to the dumbbell, you know, it's a wee bit tight getting this in, but I would rather be like that than have a gap. Now, I would normally trim this off the vise, but just to show you, you can, I can do it in the vise. I just, to make sure they're even, I just pinch up, and I'll come in with my scissor, I just sort of follow the line of my thumb. How much thumb I exposed sort of depends on the size of the fly. And it will not be perfect, but it'll be very close. And you can get a wee stretch and a wee tug. See what you've got. You don't need to be super fussy. As long as it's you want it even on both sides otherwise it will spin right so that's the fly ready for the legs and I'm going to use I've got some of the square rubber which I believe is the original um, you can use round rubber uh, but a lot of people I see a lot of folk online periodically saying how difficult it is to get square rubber legs and the limited supply and all this. Um, they're no, the fly shops don't have them, but just go to a, a lure component piece, look for the bass guys or the guys that make their own pike and musky lures. I've got yards of this stuff um, lying about. It's from, I don't know if you can see that. Lure parts and pro lures online. Old school flat rubber they sell it as. It's cheap. Readily available. But you can of just walk into a fly shop and get it. That's the difference. So, I'll just throw a half hitch. Just in case I bump a thread. You could finish the fly but I want to put a weed guard on once I've got the legs done. So, I'm going to come up with these legs. Just... I've just pulled them up between the first and second band of uh, yarn right because um, I'm going to put four on I would say this size of fly four sort of four you're kind of on the edge three might be okay any bigger than four is definitely the way to go so you've basically got to tie a square knot so I come from I always come the same way the leg near me I bring behind and over the front and I tighten that down nice and tight let it relax pick it up again and then this time I come the leg near me over the front and under the back and that gives me a nice square knot 
and the legs sit just nice. Now you'll notice these legs are massive long. Don't be the guy or the woman who tries to tie on exactly the right length and you've got you've cut yourself two and a half, two you know you've two inches, two and a quarter inches of rubber. It's a nightmare, it's very difficult to tie. You've got to cut the legs anyway, so you might as well this stuff's cheap as chips, you might as well leave yourself a wee bit extra. So up the back, over the front. Around the back. Same again. I'll give my nice square knot. And just come up. And I'm kind of sort of coming in between every second. Well, I've put two strands there together. Separate them. I'm coming up every second, but a yarn. always the same. Let it relax and then come in again. Put it nice and tight. And you can sort of shove it with your nail. I like to kind of try to get the knots dead aligned right on top. And then it'll come up before the last one there. Always the same way. Your two your two overhand knots in opposite directions. Lock know that in place. So I usually, again, this is something I would usually do on a bit of paper, but I've got to come in and colour the leg with a red tip. Any old permanent marker. And I, I mean, you don't need to be too precise because you've got to trim these. One thing with the square legs you do need to sort of turn them to make sure you're, that you need to manually turn them. The round rubber will just roll anyway. idea where it is. Something like that. I mean it's much better, it's much better to do this, you know, when I post it. Just set the fly flat, and it's very easy just to blot it with the, the thick end of the marker. Then I'll just come in with these, trim, something like that. Leg length, I mean, up to you. Some folk like big long legs, I sort of want my leg. to be long enough that it's moving, but no so long that it's sagging, if that makes any sense. I'm just going to come in here, can I give these a wee, a wee tweak if they're no sitting just how I want them. And then I'm going to come in with some fairly thick head cement, and just blob it onto that thread. Now obviously, If you're going to be fishing these tomorrow, you know, or within a couple of days of tying them, don't do this. 
But if you're preparing weeks or weeks and weeks ahead of a a trip, get the thick head cement and use head cement. Don't use super glue. Super glue's bad. It's bad for the it's bad for the rubber legs, and it's not very good in the salt water anyway. The thick head cement will sort of soak into the thread. It will soak into the the tie-in points of the the yarn. You can see it there a wee bit, the way the light hits it. But it also shrinks when it dries and it grips everything. Um, and it's salt waterproof. So the last thing I'm putting a weed garden is your choice, weed guards. Um, I always put a weed guard on. I think they're useful. I don't think they cost you fish. Especially, I mean, this an olive crab, I mean, you're fishing this in amongst. It's not got to be a pure clean bottom. So, the usual loop, fold it over, two or three wraps in front, two or three behind. Draw it down. It'll come in. Separate it with a figure eight. If it fights you, as this is doing, a couple of wraps around the individual strands and pull back. It's fine. And then you can whip finish in behind it. And there you go. That's your American. We'll put some more cement. I like to put the cement on the body first because it's just easier to get in when the weed guard's not in the way. Cement the cement will whip finish after big scissors. Don't know where my big scissors are, so I'll just cut this with these. Whoops. There you go. That's your Devil's Merkin. Again, I mean, compared to some of the stuff that's out there nowadays, it doesn't look much, but phew, don't let that fool you. It's an absolute fish catcher. So, hope that was useful. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, remember to give me a thumbs up below, and I'll see you for another one.